Most people don't understand how easy it is to get paid for building network coverage for major carriers like AT&T. And even people who are familiar with Helium or might have already deployed hotspots on the network can be hesitant to expand their coverage because of the upfront cost. Well, that's all about to change because the Helium Foundation just announced a massive $50 million grant program for network builders. So. What is the Helium Network and who are builders? So the Helium Network is a carrier-grade Wi-Fi offload network. It's easy to think of it like mini cell towers. This is something that we often say. Really what mini cell tower means is nothing more than a piece of Wi-Fi equipment to which the carriers have allowed their customers to automatically connect in Rome. So that means a Helium hotspot, which is a piece of hardware that you can buy. You would take this hotspot and you would go make a deal with, let's say, for example, a restaurant owner. So when that restaurant owner's customers come in, their patrons who have a major carrier like AT&T will automatically connect to their hotspot. They would essentially be using the restaurant's internet connection in a safe and secure way through your hotspot. So they'll have great connectivity in the restaurant. And whatever they're doing, sitting down, waiting for their food, scrolling Instagram reels, any data usage, the carrier will pay you for serving that customer through your hotspot. So who are network builders? Basically, there are people like you. They are anyone who owns a small business where there is long dwell time. So cafe, a restaurant, a dentist's office. And they are folks who will go and find the owners of these locations and help them install a hotspot and maybe make some sort of business deal with them. What's great about the network is that the demand for it is off the charts. So big carriers that represent over 200 million phone users in the United States are willing and waiting to pay for the opportunity for their customers to go and use the coverage that you deploy. An added benefit is that you're actually increasing the user experience for people who visit these establishments by making it such that they no longer have a dead zone there or weak cell phone coverage. So they can get an Uber, contact loved ones, or send photos to a friend to get advice about what they're shopping for with the type of connectivity that you expect when you're in a crowded, populous location. So as you can see on this grant announcement page, Right here, it says, demand for coverage is greater than ever, and now's the time to double down and expand our coverage footprint. So that is true. As I said, hundreds of millions of people out there with their phones, and there is huge demand to increase connectivity and reduce dead zones. So what is the Helium Foundation, and why are they spending so much money on this? The Helium Foundation is a grant-giving organization that supports the build-out of the Helium network. And the reason that so many resources and so much money is being committed to this effort is that we have an amazing moment in time opportunity to grow this network to be the biggest of its kind ever. And we want to do as much as possible to support that. So Scott Siegel, the Helium Foundation CEO, said it best. Helium is on the precipice of mass adoption that has incredibly positive implications for everyone with a mobile phone. Okay, so what's the opportunity and how can you get involved? Well, there are a couple ways to do this. There are two major ways that you can expand the Helium network. Either you can buy what's called a Helium mobile hotspot, which is a piece of hardware, or you can bring your existing Wi-Fi coverage, your existing Wi-Fi fleet, and convert it basically instantly to serve the cell carrier traffic that the Helium network services. So there are two different paths. If you are working with an office building or a dentist office or something that might have some sort of built-in Wi-Fi enterprise grade or a prosumer grade solution, then you can convert that existing fleet without buying any hardware. That's awesome. If you are building new coverage in a place that doesn't have the necessary hardware, which this applies to, I would say, almost most people who are building coverage, you would buy a Helium mobile hotspot. What's great about a Helium mobile hotspot is it's super easy to set up, super easy to use, very stable, requires very low maintenance, and it gets a little bit more rewards than the fleet conversion option because of something called proof of coverage. So no matter which type of coverage you want to build, you could become eligible for this $50 million grant program. Let's look at both options to see what the eligibility requirements are. So for a Helium mobile hotspot, if you're deploying brand new coverage, there are some requirements. First of all, hotspots need to be deployed in high value locations. All right, what is a high value location? It's basically anything that has what we call slow moving people. Put simply, where are people going and bringing out their phones and dwelling for a while? Sitting down, scrolling YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, anything that uses data. Where is there a mass of people that are underserved by the uh, traditional telco infrastructure in that space? Maybe it means that they have no bars there, or it means that if they have five bars that the signal is very slow, uh, there's low bandwidth because a lot of people are saturating whatever connectivity is already there. So these are the exact type of 
gaps that we want to fill with the Helium network. And these are the things that the telcos highly value. Okay, so why does it matter if the telcos highly value a certain location? Can't you just deploy a hotspot anywhere? Well, once you deploy a hotspot, it's not instantly overnight that you start earning from everyone with an AT&T or other major carrier phone in the area. No, you have to actually get selected. Now, this is an ongoing uh, process that is being refined over time, but basically, as of this video, the way carrier selection works is that a team that represents the Helium network on your behalf will review all new deployed hotspots and submit them to the carriers for approval. If the carriers approve your hotspot, great their customers will start connecting to it. So it's really important to know exactly where you're deploying and whether the carriers value it. I'll show you how to confirm that in a minute. Now, in order to qualify, you also need to order a minimum of 25 hotspots. This means that you're committed to expanding coverage in your area. Remember, there are hundreds of thousands, millions of distinct locales within the United States alone. So in order to make the grant program efficient, it's important to focus on people who are willing to really commit to build out coverage in their area. And finally, in the initial wave of this grant program, it is going to be in New York City. Okay, why New York City? It's really simple. It's a really dense place with a lot of users. Any hotspot deployed there is significantly likely to be serving a lot of people. Case in point, Helium already works with Link NYC, the infrastructure project that has built outdoor Wi-Fi all over New York City in order to connect cell phone carrier customers. Let's also take a look real quick at the other case, which is you're not going to be buying hotspots, but you're going to be converting an existing Wi-Fi deployment or fleet as we like to call them. So how does that work? Again, high value location is everything. Uh, examples might be doctor's offices, waiting rooms, public libraries, restaurant chains that might have their own enterprise Wi-Fi set up in all of their locations. Again, it needs to be a high value location. You must convert a minimum of 100 access points. So an access point, I mean, if you're going to be doing this, you should probably already know what it is, but it is an individual Wi-Fi radio, essentially, that is connected to the larger network. Uh, so for example, something like an office building, if it's a high rise, can have hundreds of access points. But the point is, you know, you don't want to just go in and convert maybe one access point. You want to add a wide coverage area. And again, you need to be based in New York City because that's where the trial is starting. So the program is pretty straightforward. If you are interested in this, if you're thinking, hey, that's me, I wanna go out and build the network in my area, I know people who have great locations, or I have great locations, or I know people who own fleets across the city, across the state, wherever you live. One of the greatest parts of this opportunity, in my opinion, is you're not competing with everyone in the whole country. You're just competing with people in your immediate local area. So Helium deployment is very localized in the sense that everyone has an opportunity to deploy in their area. And we need people in, again, hundreds of thousands, millions of different locales just within the United States to participate in this in order to build the network to the degree that we all want. This is our goal, is to create a network that spans the entire country and does carrier offload in a massive way. Now, one thing you may have been wondering throughout this video is, how do I go find, how do I confirm what really is a good location before I start sending emails to people or you know trying to talk to cafe owners? So there is a website called world.helium.com which helps you do exactly this. So here I am on Helium World, and I've zoomed into New York City since it's the initial expansion city for this grant program. So there are a few layers you can look at here. As you can see, these are hotspots that have already been deployed. So there is actually a lot of coverage in New York City, but you know there are thousands, tens of thousands of establishments in New York City, and most locations are still not covered in the way that they need to be. So in the bottom right, there are a few different layers that you can look at on this map. So the first is data traffic. Now this just kind of sums up all of the data that's already flowing through Helium hotspots in different parts of the city. As you can see, the hexes are pretty big, they cover pretty wide regions. In Manhattan, you can see there are certain areas where there are over 100 gigabytes going through the hotspots. That's a lot of revenue for people who have deployed hotspots there. Now, if I zoom in, I can make the hexes a little bit more granular. And as you can see, there are a lot of locations where hotspots are deployed and are doing at least hundreds of megabytes to gigabytes per day, usually in individual locations. 
So if I go to the bottom right, I can toggle on the POC reward multiplier layer. Now this is kind of a different way to look at similar data. So the reward multiplier is something that only applies to Helium mobile hotspots. It does not apply to fleets, but it is essentially a proxy for how busy is this area? How good is this location? And if the location is really good, deep purple here, you could be eligible for additional rewards for providing coverage with your hotspot in that location. Finally, we have the observed demand layer. Now this one is my favorite. So this uses anonymized location data from people who have signed up for the Helium mobile cell phone service in order to get a proxy metric of how many people are in any given area. Now, since Helium mobile does not have hundreds of millions of subscribers like the big carriers, this is only really useful in very dense areas, but it is really cool to zoom in on Manhattan here and see how many different visitors are visiting each hex in 30 days. So you can interpret this as 33 unique Helium Mobile customers made 178 visits to just this little corner on this block in New York City. I think that is incredibly cool. And the best part is it doesn't just apply to New York City, it applies to the entire United States. So even if you're not eligible for this program right now, you can go anywhere in the country and see the demand and the usage. So right now I'm looking at the Philadelphia airport and here is the observed demand from Helium mobile customers. So if I go to the bottom right and I toggle to data traffic, I can see, whoa, there are already massive usage numbers going on in the Philadelphia airport because, hey, someone's already deployed hotspots and become eligible for carrier offload there. Look, there's a hotspot right there. It's serving 600 daily users on average in the airport. Again, this is just normal people pulling out their phones and auto-connecting. They don't think about it. They probably don't even know that they're using it. And yet they are consuming 30 to 40 gigabytes of traffic, causing that hotspot owner to get paid every single day. So if you're interested, head over to helium.com slash grant, link in the description, fill out this form, really simple, first, last name, and email, you can add your company and get in touch. I really would love to see people taking advantage of this opportunity. There is a lot of money to go around. One thing that's really important to mention is that these incentives are on top of the incentive that you already have from deploying Helium hotspots. So you will get paid for data transfer from people connecting to your hotspot and using it while they're on their phones. And you could also get paid for proof of coverage rewards for those of you who choose to deploy Helium mobile hotspots. The fleets are not eligible for that. This can add up to significant earnings even before you receive the grant rebate as some people are already earning tens or hundreds of dollars per month per location that they deploy a hotspot. Again, there's high demand for this. And when you're talking about the data transfer rewards that you receive, this isn't some made up magical incentive. This is real revenue from the carriers paying to use your hotspot. I think that's so cool. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Otherwise, get out there and deploy some hotspots.